Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, longest continuous subarray with absolute difference less than or equal to the limit. So before we even get into this, I wanna mention that this is a medium problem, but quite frankly, there is a leak code hard that is literally easier than this problem. It's literally a simplified version of this problem. And it is actually a part of the neat code 150 list. So if you go to my website and you search for the sliding window maximum problem, you can find it. You can find the solution that I have for it and even the code, which again is going to be more simple actually than today's solution. So highly recommend checking that one out. The idea is we're given an input array of numbers and some limit. We want to find the longest subarray where the absolute difference between any two numbers is less than or equal to the limit. Now, when they tell us that absolute value, what does that tell you? We want the absolute value of some difference to be less than this threshold. And so that pretty much means that the minimum element in the subarray and the maximum element in the subarray, so we need to min max, the difference between those two has to be less than or equal to this. So in other words, we kind of need to keep track of the minimum and the maximum in each subarray. Now, obviously, the brute force would be to look at every single subarray. That's going to be n squared. So can we do better than that? Yes, we can. Now, given that we're looking at subarrays, aka windows, you might think that we can get away with something like a sliding window. And we kind of can. It's kind of a sliding window solution, but it's more complex than that. Because think about this. We have in here the like let's say we're maintaining the minimum and the maximum and at this point we find that obviously the difference is greater than or equal to the limit well it just needs to be strictly greater than the limit and in, right now it is the difference is six so what do we do well we shift our left pointer we kind of decrease our window until that's no longer the case so right now it's pretty simple just get rid of the eight but how would we know that consider a subarray that looks like this here in our subarray, we have the maximum seven and minimum one. This is the first time in this subarray that the difference is greater than four. Okay, so now we shrink the window, remove this. Well, actually, the difference is still greater than four. Right now, it was convenient for us where our maximum is at the same position, at the leftmost position, but we don't know. Like after we remove the leftmost element, we don't know where the new max is going to be. We have to recalculate the max and same thing for the minimum possibly. So that's going to make our solution inefficient. We could use a data structure like a heap. And I think that will work. It's just that there is a more efficient solution with a heap. I think the time complexity would be something like n log n. So to find the most optimal solution, let me show you a little bit of the train of thought, like the intuition. Again, I think if you haven't solved that problem, sliding window maximum, I think it's very difficult to solve this problem. So definitely check that one out. Kind of like with this example, when we get rid of the maximum, we need to find the new max. Wouldn't it be convenient for us instead of just keeping track of a single max and a single minimum? we actually had multiple like we kept them in order like seven goes first next uh, six next three next one so then when we remove seven we already know the next maximum is going to be six and when we remove six the next maximum is going to be three this is kind of all the intuition you really get for this problem but i think this is enough if you've solved sliding window maximum this is kind of enough intuition because this hints at something called the monotonic stack and th that's the more common way to see the solution the monotonic stack but in our case we're actually going to be using a monotonic queue which makes this slightly more difficult and we're going to have two different monotonic queues and you're going to see why in just a second but do you see something about this monotonic queue it's in decreasing order right the values are in decreasing order so for the minimum queue, would we just do kind of the opposite, the reverse of that? Would I just put here one, three, six, seven? No, because this actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Because think about this. We pop one and then the new the new minimum becomes three. How would that ever happen look at the order of the array like we have our well, a window we're looking at a continuous subarray right so maybe our right pointer is over here our left pointer is over here maybe we shrink the left pointer and then shift it all the way over here 
Okay, we got rid of seven and six. So if this is a queue, remember we can add and remove from this side. It's a double ended queue. Let's assume that. And we can add and remove from this side. Why would we ever remove seven and six after we have removed one and three? It doesn't make sense. What I'm getting at is this. Let's look at the first example now. We're trying to keep track of the min and max. We look at the first element. It's an eight. Okay, that's simple. Let's go ahead and add eight as the min and the current max, right? Simple so far. Next, we look at the next element. It's two. So we're trying to keep track of the max element, and we know that so far the max is eight. But if we were to ever take our pointer from here and then shift it, the new max would obviously be two. So we're going to go ahead and add two to the queue over here to keep track of the maximums. But for the minimum, think about this for a second. We are here now. This is our subarray. We could take the left pointer and shift it here, but the minimum is two right now. There's no point. There's not a single point where the minimum is going to be eight, not a single one, because for this subarray, the minimum is two. If we add more elements, we're never going to remove the two before we remove the eight. Therefore, just stop considering the eight. So from this data structure, this min heap or this min Q, sorry, um, we're going to remove eight. And now we're going to take two and add it to this queue. So therefore, any time we encounter an element that's smaller, if I saw a one now, I'd say one is smaller than this. So remove this. But if I see an, a, a bigger element like four, I'm going to still add it to the min uh, queue because even though four is greater than two for now, at some point we are going to remove the two. And at that point, four is going to become the new minimum. So this uh, data structure is going to be monotonically increasing. This data structure is going to be monotonically decreasing for those reasons I just mentioned. So now we're here. We're never going to shift the left pointer after uh, like adding an element here or adding an element here. But there is a condition where we are going to shift the left pointer. Remember, we're trying to maximize the subarray. We're trying to make it as big as possible. So we're only going to shift the left pointer if we need to. And when would we need to do that? Well, the limit threshold has been violated. So basically right now we're going to calculate. We're going to get the maximum. That's very easy to do for us, right? Just take take the first value from this queue. We're going to get the minimum. Just take the first value from this queue. Take the absolute difference between them. It's six. Obviously, that's greater than this one. So what we do now is take our left pointer and shift it over here. And in doing that, we're going to end up removing this value here, removing the eight. So from this data structure only. So now we see what's the maximum? It's two. What's the minimum? It's two. That makes sense because this is literally our subarray right now. So now we try to increase the subarray. Now we get to this one. We add the four. This uh, this queue needs to have the maximum element. So right now four is obviously greater than two. So what we do is pop two. We keep popping until it's either empty or there's no element greater than four or the only element left are greater than four. But right now it's empty. So we're going to go ahead and add four here. And same thing for this data structure, but this needs to store the minimum. Four is greater than two, so this is fine as it is. Just go ahead and add the four. Okay, now our subarray is over here. We take the maximum, we take the minimum. The difference between them is two. That is less than or equal to this. So our longest subarray so far that we found is this one of length two, and that is pretty much the result. But I will continue with this example. So now we're at seven. We want to add seven to the max heap. Four is smaller than seven, so let's pop that and then it's empty. So then we add seven back here. We also want to add seven to this one and it's fine as it is because this is the min heap or min Q. And so we can go ahead and just add seven like that. OK, so now this is our subarray. Let's get the maximum seven. Let's get the minimum. It's two. The difference between them is five. That is greater than the limit. So let's shift our left pointer. So our left pointer is here right now. Let's shift it to be over here. So we're going to remove two. We remove it only from this data structure. So now we have these two left. This is valid. So the subarray size is two, but that's not longer than our, our original result. So this is kind of it. We reach the end of the input. Now, if this idea of monotonic increasing and decreasing doesn't make sense to you yet, here are a couple examples. I would dry run through this. Have a few examples where the values are in monotonic decreasing order and then they start increasing and maybe 
uh, then they start decreasing again, something like that, something that gives you like a lot of changes. And maybe the limit for this, uh, you could do it on a range of values, do it on two, do it on three, maybe even do it on four, I don't know. I won't do that because I don't want this video to be too long, but I think you'll honestly learn more if you actually do it by yourself anyway. Now the time complexity for this approach is going to be O of N, that'll be probably more clear in the coding explanation. Same thing for the space, because we do have a few cues. So the Q is gonna be N, where N is the size of the input array. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually declare those cues. So I'm gonna have a min queue. It's gonna be a deck in Python, and I'm gonna have a max queue, which is also gonna be a deck in Python. Now, just for some notes, the min queue is gonna be monotonic increasing. Our max queue is gonna be monotonically decreasing. I'm gonna have a pointer, which is gonna be left. It's initially gonna be zero, and I'm gonna have a, another variable for the result, which is what we're gonna return. That's gonna be the longest size of the subarray. And then I'm gonna go for R in range length of num. So this is our right pointer. And so what we want to do every time we get the newest element, what we wanna do is we wanna append it to the end of each queue. So to the min queue, we wanna append this element nums of R and for the max element we want to append nums of r the problem is we might have to uh, pop some elements before we're allowed to do that so while the min queue is non-empty and the current element is actually smaller than the element at the end of the queue how do we get the element at the end well in python it's pretty easy you can just say min q negative one because remember we want the smallest elements to be at the beginning of the queue they need to be in order they need to be monotonically increasing so if we find a smaller element let's pop the existing element so in here we're going to say min q dot pop and we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing with the max heap so i'm just going to copy and paste this, change the variables around. So here, this is gonna be max Q, here is gonna be max Q, and here is gonna be max Q. But there's gonna be one difference, actually. You might be able to guess which one of these characters we wanna change, it's this one. So the max Q, it needs to be monotonically decreasing. So if we find a value that is greater than the max Q's value, we're gonna pop that value. So that's why we're doing this. So that's why we change the sign around here as well. And also, I don't know why I put these outside of the loop. They should belong to this for loop. But we're almost done, actually. The only thing now we need to do is, first of all, definitely we want to update the result. Result should be maximum. We should calculate it as the max of itself and the max of the current window, which we can calculate like this, r minus left plus 1. Okay, but there's only one thing we forgot about. We didn't use this variable limit anywhere here. So let's go ahead and do that. We could put that logic here or we could put it down here, but it's very important that you put it here, that you put it after the statements here where we add the current value to the queue because we need to validate both of these queues and we should probably do that after we've updated them not before we update them right because we want to validate the window before we try to update the result down here so here what i'm going to say is while the max element minus the smaller element how do we get that right we want to get the absolute difference well let's get the number uh, from the max queue which we can say max q uh, at the beginning, which is going to be at index zero. Subtract from it the element in the min queue at index zero. And let's just check, is this greater than the limit? Has it violated the limit? If it has, we definitely want to shift our left pointer. Now, the rest of this code might look kind of tricky. It might look kind of different than we were doing in the drawing explanation. We actually, at this point, we don't know where the left pointer actually is. It might not belong to either of these elements. And so the easiest way for us to check which element we need to pop, like which queue we need to pop from, is to just check with like an if statement. Let's just check if the num at the left pointer here is equal to the first element from the max queue. If that's the case, let's pop uh, from the max Q. And this time we're actually popping from the other direction, max Q pop left. Because if we're shrinking our window, we're obviously gonna be shrinking from the left side. And then here, same thing. If the element at the left pointer is equal to the min element right now, let's pop the min element from that Q here, pop left. This is the entire code. And just to kind of briefly explain this part, 
you might be wondering, first of all, shouldn't we be checking here that the queues are non-empty? Shouldn't we at least check here that max queue is non-empty and min queue is not empty and that this condition is true? Yes, like this works if you want to play it safe. Like I don't blame you for writing this out, but we technically don't need this portion because both of these are guaranteed to be non-empty because first of all, we just added the last element here. So each of them will have at least one element and that last element, we're not gonna pop it from both of them because there's no way that a single element, like the difference between itself is gonna be zero and that's never gonna be greater than the limit, which is always greater than zero. So we're never gonna pop that last element. For that reason, we actually don't need this portion of the code. And here, the reason we have these if statements in the first place is because these loops are actually popping elements. Now they're popping from the other side of the queue, but it's still possible they'll pop so many elements that the queue does become empty before we add this last element. So it's possible that like the, these queues have popped all the elements from them, but that's never going to affect the left pointer. The left pointer will only be shifted when the viol when the limit has been violated. So uh, keep that in mind. Now this is the entire code. Let's just run it to make sure that it works. And here, as you can see, it does. It's pretty efficient. In case you're wondering how I was able to solve this problem well obviously i solved sliding window maximum before and also because i did solve this problem about four years ago as you can see here it did take me a few attempts though if you found this helpful check out neatcode.io even if you just check out the free resources i really guarantee it's going to help you out a lot thanks for watching and i'll see you soon